Hello, and once again, welcome to the concluding part of alkaline earth metal family. The last class was really, really vital and important for you and for your examination. You know, the trends of carbonates, sulfates, chromates. On one hand, their solubility and thermal decomposition and compared to the hydroxides, how they contrast. And what about the solubility of beryllium fluoride and all that, so many subtle aspects we had discussed. Today's program is very, very cool. It's just to maintain the formality to complete this uh, unit we are doing, but give me your 100%, I'm sure within 45 minutes or maybe less, we will be finishing this program. This is the part two, chemistry of magnesium, calcium, and their important compounds. Now, magnesium has several ores, minerals, like magnesite, dolomite, epsom salt, that is MgSO4.7 water, carnalite, this is widely available throughout the world, carnalite, KCl, MgCl2.6 water, cassyrite, and since magnesium, like other alkali metals, and even aluminum, they are extracted electrolytically from their fused salts. That is, is more economical than any chemical method. So uh, there are now many methods how to extract magnesium from its ores. One of the earliest has been the carnalite. Nowadays, carnalite is not being used much. Carnalite first was dehydrated. You know, there is a problem in drying, in removing this water from the carnalite, there is a great difficulty. If you heat it in air, not over a current of dry HCl, then there will be internal reaction. Magnesium, beryllium, chlorides, they are susceptible for hydrolysis. We are dehydrating, but there will be hydrolysis. So what will happen, I'm showing you. Uh, I'm not showing KCL. I'm just showing how uh, it will lose five water easily. Five water will be easily removed. But one water will remain and that will chemically react to produce basic magnesium chloride, basic magnesium chloride plus HCl. This will go up. And further heating, this will dehydrate to produce infusible magnesium oxide. When I say infusible, I mean high melting. And this is unsuitable for any electrolysis. The melting point is more than 2,500. So it will be economically not viable to melt magnesium oxide and carry out electrolysis. So uh, it was, it is dried in a current of dry HCl. So that if you apply Lee Satellier's principle, you know, in both the steps, HCl is produced. So if HCl is loaded from the beginning, or it carries, the container carries loads of HCl gas, then the backward reaction is favorable. This reaction will be prevented. And as a result on strong heating, six water will go to give you anhydrous magnesium chloride and KCl after which KCl can be removed. Melting these two above 770 uh, and then slowly cooling. First KCl having greater melting point will be separated. When you remove KCl, you get dry magnesium chloride, right? So to dehydrate carnalite, that was the trick was to heat it over a current of dry SCL so that this reaction is prevented. LCP, Lee Satellier's principle. Now, nowadays, this dehydration is done in a separate chamber, just I'm trying to sound you that chamber where dry, drying is done is called the fluidized bed dryer. 
will not discuss more about the fluidized bed dryers they are they are dehydrated but we don't bother we need basic magnesium chloride it gives there is reaction there is reaction at the end one water will not leave it it will react but doesn't matter you take that basic magnesium chloride and in a separate chamber treat it with coke and chlorine coke and chlorine and heat it you will get carbon dioxide will escape as a vapor as a vapor and hcl will escape as a vapor will give you pure magnesium chloride or by chance there is mgo it is further dried to give you a high melting mgo then it is allowed to react with same chlorine and carbon i mean in this mixture in the fluid after fluidized bed drying you get both of this so both of them are converted to magnesium chloride and the rest go away so this is the latest way of getting magnesium chloride from carnallite also in many countries they use dolomite dolomite uh, is used in many countries uh, to to first separate magnesium from calcium first the heat the carbonates they give carbon dioxide they produce their oxides then uh, on that is on calcination dolomite gives a mixture of this then heated with chlorine and carbon the same chlorine and carbon to give you mgcl2 and cacl2 which are separated very easily or if some cacl2 is there that also is not a big problem because we will be applying the discharge potential for magnesium not for calcium rather a bit of calcium is good to lower down the melting temperature you will know why the presence of some other impurity some i mean magnesium chloride will be the major part and calcium chloride will be a small part uh, so that you have to definitely remove a, a large part of calcium chloride so that the melting point of magnesium chloride is 7, 770 it will be reduced to maybe 700 or 670 like that the other way to get uh, magnesium is from brine rich in magnesium chloride in some places the sea water contains large magnesium chloride so in such places where sea water brine is rich with magnesium chloride is again dehydrated to produce this basic magnesium chloride and then it is treated with hcl to give you mgcl2 plus water this is another way to get mgcl2 solid and remember this is a different kind of reaction this is a heterogeneous reaction this is solid dry solid and this is gas and this is solid and this is gas it goes away leaving behind the magnesium chloride and hydrous which we need now it is very simple you take magnesium chloride melt it the fusion temperature is 770 but to reduce the fusion temperature some impurity like sodium chloride calcium chloride is added and at the discharge potential of magnesium magnesium uh, you know is produced here at the cathode here then since it is lighter floats and using vacuum suction it is removed from time to time and this is the anode where chloride ion produces chlorine here and it escapes in another outlet this is very simple and continuously magnesium chloride is put here this is an oven electric oven where it is melted uh, you can take only magnesium chloride or you can add some impurity in some commercial processes some impurity like sodium chloride or calcium chloride is added now i have written the same thing here i have added some impurity and the melting temperature more the impurity less the melting temperature so electrodes uh, cathode anode these are very trivial things for you now let's see because we have already studied the gradation properties the general properties it will be extremely easy to understand the individual properties magnesium ribbon burns in air or oxygen with blinding white light forming predominantly magnesium oxide and the common reactions for all alkaline earth metals we won't do it once again 
that calcium reacts with hot cold water others react with calcium strontium barium react with cold water and magnesium with boiled water beryllium was not <laughs> reacting and now at 700 temperature with steam it now has started to react so all these things we have done but some of the unique properties of magnesium which are to be noted is the preparation of grignard reagent and when you study organic chemistry very soon you will find the grignard reagent is a panacea for all ills every kind of organic compound can be prepared through grignard reagent what is grignard reagent it is alkyl magnesium halide it is prepared by mixing magnesium powder with alkyl halide in ether solvent not water ether solvent so that magnesium get inserted forms a bond between carbon and halogen so this rmgx is commonly called grignard reagent alkyl magnesium halide these are used for the preparation of many many organic compounds then as a reducing agent you know it is uh, it has high numeric value of srp therefore it can reduce many many metals and non metals which are below it non metals like carbon can be easily reduced from carbon dioxide you get carbon interestingly magnesium a burning magnesium continues to burn in carbon dioxide because it will re remove oxygen from it and it continues to burn and you find at the bottom you some car black carbon particles that's the beauty magnesium if you just burn a magnesium ribbon and put it in carbon dioxide atmosphere it will not be extinguished it will continue to burn the reaction will continue and you get magnesium oxide fumes white fumes i mean that will ultimately settle down and at the bottom you get carbon similarly it will take away sulfur from sulfur dioxide but with no there will be uh, formation of uh, nitride not n2 nitrogen will go from plus 2 to minus 3 plus 2 to minus 3 so you must remember these, these are some of the unique uh, reactions of magnesium magnesium can also reduce boron from boron oxide it can reduce silicon dioxide to silicon and it can also reduce potassium chlorate to chloride a high jump from plus five to minus one in all the cases magnesium becomes magnesium oxide excepting here in ammonium chloride it is as if it is displacing hydrogen ammonia will remain as such as if there is h plus ion here that H plus ion is getting electron from magnesium and getting reduced to hydrogen gas. So you get ammonia, magnesium chloride, and hydrogen. So you, you, you can rationalize the redox reaction by saying that uh, the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one here in hydrogen, in ammonium ion, or hydrogen. And this is zero, and magnesium zero to plus two. Similarly, the oxidizing agent ferric ion will be responsible to oxidize magnesium, but ferric will not be converted to ferrous. It will convert plus one of water to hydrogen. That's the beauty. In presence of you know, water, ferric chloride will no doubt oxidize magnesium to magnesium chloride, but itself will not be reduced. It will produce hydrogen. That's the uh, beauty that uh, it helps in making water as the real oxidizing agent, but it helps. In the absence of this, it almost acts as a catalyst. And in, in fact, when H plus ion goes away, OH minus and Fe3 plus gives you a reddish brown precipitate. Now, you have uses. Uses of magnesium, you can just read them. I have recorded as a reducing agent for the extraction of many elements, preparation of Grignard reagent, magnesium ribbon, along with barium peroxide, is used as an ignition mixture to start, uh, you know, uh, the burning 
continues to burn the entire ribbon and barium peroxide will help supplying oxygen. So much so that the thermite is a mixture of ferric oxide and aluminum, aluminum powder and that, that also being melted. It comes uh, and it helps in melting the mixture of ferric oxide and aluminum where there is a reduction, aluminum becomes aluminum oxide, iron becomes free. So this is called thermite welding uh, that comes under aluminothermy. Magnesium hydroxide was used as a suspension. Nowadays, nobody, no doctor, I don't know, recommends uh, that jealousy MPS a red colored uh, suspension to drink uh, liberally when you have a bad stomach with some acidity and all that. So nowadays, I think uh, new generation antacids have come up. Pantoprazole, rabiprazole, and all that, uh, I don't think you know, doctors are recommending. It was being used as uh, uh, antacid. Milk of magnesia it is called magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium oxide is called, uh, you know, um, magnesia, but this is milk of magnesia. It is being used uh, for, it was used for antacid purpose. And also, magnesium ribbon or powder is used in flash ball for photography and magnesium has fantastic uh, alloy like electron alloy is not c it is k electron alloy is contains 90 percent magnesium and the rest 10 percent so many metals like zinc aluminium manganese zirconium yttrium and many other rare earths gadolinium neodymium neodymium and so on so that is such a strong and light alloy used in auto racing cars and aerospace engineering applications. Magnalium is not really, you know, ore of uh, uh, mag, mag is there, but aluminum is 95%. But the presence of magnesium makes it light and it is used for making balance beams. Now, some other compounds of magnesium. Some compounds of magnesium is magnesium oxide, which is also used as antacid. Refractory bricks in, in metallurgical furnaces. The bricks, the side walls were made up of, are made up of usually magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, all that, because they have high melting point. And uh, this is 25 degrees Celsius. Sorel cement uh, is this, is used for bonding wood and glass fiber composites. Make strong bonding between wood and glass fibers, used as adhesives. Milk of magnesia, we have already discussed. And this magnesium chloride dot six water, you can get it from carnalite by removing KCL and again crystallizing. Remove six water by the way I have told you, heating in a dry current of HCL and then prepare a solution and crystallize. Only magnesium chloride, remove KCL. Then you get hexahydrate and uh, you know, um, I have already told you the dehydrated carnalite is melted and cooled at 770, KCL separates first. So after that, you can again crystallize. Now magnesium, whether it is magnesium chloride or magnesium nitrate, that is tested with a reagent called disodium hydrogen phosphate, Na2HPO4 in presence of alkali, I mean ammonium hydroxide. So you get an immediate white precipitate that is called magnesium ammonium phosphate not NH3. It's not a complex. Ammonium is a basic ion. Mg2 plus NH4 plus. So total positive charge is plus three and phosphate is three minus. Magnesium ammonium phosphate, that white precipitate will definitely confirm that the metal ion is magnesium. Uses of magnesium chloride is the extraction of magnesium. We have already know, uh, learned how electrolytically we can extract magnesium from molten dry magnesium chloride and sorel cement. Magnesium sulfate dot seven water, Epsom salt is available in nature or else you can prepare magnesium sulfate and crystallize in water. Magnesium sulfate can be prepared from any magnesium salt or compound like magnesium oxide with sulfuric acid and then crystallize, it will be seven water. Chloride six water, sulfate seven water. And on heating to 150, 
it loses six water i must have i i told you that magnesium chloride also magnesium ion has a special unique feature to react with water so also beryllium above that you know this is minus 6 water goes out but the remaining one water needs another 50 degree celsius where you get anhydrous and further strong heating will produce mgo so2 and o2 and this mgso4 anhydrous can be reduced to you know uh, not magnesium will not be reduced but sulfur will be reduced from plus 6 to plus 4 and carbon from 0 to plus 2 so you can get magnesium oxide from magnesium sulfate uh, along with sulfur dioxide using coke carbon as the reducing agent earlier magnesium sulfate was used as purgative for easy motion you understand stool motion purgative nowadays uh, nobody bothers about magnesium salt filler in paper industry you know paper for making paper a lot of other ingredients are added one of them is magnesium salt mordant in dyeing and tanning before dyeing is not death dyeing means to give color before dyeing and leather tanning first it is soaked with magnesium sulfate uh, and some other mordants so that it becomes little soft and ready to absorb the dry or to go for tanning now let's talk about calcium calcium you know when calcium comes we are really very excited because we ourselves contain a lot of calcium of course magnesium calcium in our bones all our bones and teeth it is available in nature as carbonates in several crystalline forms and their looks their appearances their uh, values are all different you know it can be limestone it is not as much costly they are used for uh, metallurgical process marble used for flooring chalk <laughs> used very very cheap chalk calcite iceland spar all these are different forms of calcium carbonate mixed carbonate like dolomite gypsum is calcium sulfate dot two water fluor spar calcium fluoride and thorapatite three calcium phosphate dot calcium fluoride similarly there is a chlorapatite three calcium phosphate dot calcium chloride now calcium is present in our bones and teeth also in hard water and egg cells now let's see how calcium is extracted by the by the same electrolysis process are you listening to me i would like to make a check raise your hands please okay calcium is extracted usually from fused calcium chloride you can take any carbonate mineral or dolomite or whatever then treat it with hcl make it calcium chloride and mix it with some impurity i told you some impurity is necessary in an indian language if you are an indian listening to me then you can understand south indian it will be difficult daag achhe hain if you are not an indian uh, you can't understand i told in hindi dag achhe hain it's me it means stain in uh, a clothing is good that is the ad advertising advertisement material for a uh, you know a detergent company very renowned detergent company dag achhe hain that's why i said impurity is good but it should be less not same that will reduce the melting point of calcium chloride from higher to lower value at least 600 to 700 is economically viable electrodes graphite cell lining and cathode is water cooled iron cathode or steel cathode with carrot shaped tip 
Have you seen carrot? You eat every day. Carrot said, Jit. Water cooled iron cathode with carrot sept. 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 S H A P D. Tip suspended from the top to contact the fuse mass. I'm showing you. This is the carrot sept is not visible, but when calcium will be deposited here, it will be the carrot sept will vanish. It will be looking like this. Because calcium is soluble in molten calcium chloride. I repeat. Because calcium metal is soluble in calcium chloride, so it has to be removed from time to time. There is a mechanism, a motor running mechanism where this will be shifted to another place and tapped to remove calcium and again it will be restored to uh, get the deposition of fresh calcium metal and chlorine will be liberated at the anode. It's not shown here. Obviously, there will be some opening where uh, chlorine will go away without any chance of mixing. So calcium and chlorine. Since calcium is soluble infused electrolyte, it is removed as soon as it is deposited on the carrot sap tip at the cathode from time to time. Now, some of the unique reactions of calcium, just like we saw some unique reactions of magnesium, common reactions we didn't take like reaction with water and reaction with acids, we didn't. So with carbon, this also we had done. With carbon or coke, it produces calcium carbide. Even with calcium carbon dioxide, it doesn't produce, you know, uh, carbon. Magnesium was producing carbon, you see. Look to the difference. Magnesium was producing carbon, but calcium will not produce carbon will produce calcium carbide and calcium oxide in both the cases. And as a reducing agent, it, it can displace vanadium, can displace chromium. It reacts with ammonia to produce amide with a little bit of impurities or slowly, just like, uh, you know, in case of alkali metal, immediately it was giving an intense blue solution, which was uh, highly conducting paramagnetic containing unpaired electron ammoniated electron and ammoniated metal ion. Same thing will happen here because, uh, but, but little slowly. But if you add a little bit of impurities, then it will form hydrogen and calcium amide. And calcium amide on strong heating will give you calcium nitride and ammonia. This is another, you know, consecutive reaction of the product which can be harnessed in getting calcium nitride, right? Now, uh, calcium is used. There are hundreds and thousands of applications. You are not supposed to remember everything. Calcium is used to remove sulfur in petroleum refining. It is used to remove last trace of water from alcohol to make it ultra dry, 100% dry. At, at the end, calcium, it will remove all water and as a reducing agent for extraction of many elements. Now, I don't know why I have discriminated this to put a, you know, uh, a box. I'm fond of this one, yes. Let us take uh, some compounds of calcium. Calcium oxide is called the quick lime and that is obtained by heating any carbonate Oh, there are so many carbonate ore. Uh, nobody will 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 risk uh, you know heating. Uh, I mean, marble is very costly. At the most, you can heat chalk or you can go for limestone, but not uh, this costly you know marble. So calcium carbonate on heating uh, this high temperature will give you calcium oxide, which is called quick lime. Quick lime is amorphous, high melting point. On exposure to air, it catches water and becomes hydroxide and also carbonate. Air contains carbon dioxide, slowly you get both. Now, but if you take only quick lime and add calculated quantity of water, calculated quantity of water, it will produce a solid compound. These are all solid, this is liquid. 
is that is called the slack line. This phenomenon is called slaking of line. This is a solid compound, but you can prepare solution. The solution, the, it, is, it is not highly soluble. As you know, solubility of hydroxides, it goes on increasing. So calcium hydroxide being in the middle is moderately soluble, but whatever little solubility is there, if you just remove those insoluble uh, left out, and that clean solution is called lime water. Uh, and soda lime is just a mixture of quick lime and soda, that is sodium hydroxide. That is called soda lime, is often used uh, for many organic reactions, soda lime. It can be used uh, with acidic oxides like silica to produce silicate. This is a slag making process, we shall be knowing that. Where there is a basic impurity, you can add uh, silica as the, as the flux to produce the, the, the uh, mm, this is the impurity, supposing this is the impurity, this is silica, is the, is the uh, flux. You get, uh, who can tell me? Flux plus gang is equal to what? Flux, raise your hands, I, I will unmute you because you have learned it in, in your uh, school level. So no one, no one could tell me flux, supposing this is the flux you have added and this is the impurity, basic impurity. So what is obtained during metallurgy, during uh, the extraction of a metal, the upper layer is called slag. Similarly, uh, if there is an acidic impurity like phos phosphorus pentoxide, you, you are using calcium oxide uh, as the uh, flux, then you get a slag that is calcium phosphate. But sometimes it is called Thomas slag. And calcium oxide, quick lime can be used uh, in many ways, manufacture of cement, preparation of many chemicals, purification of sugar, manufacture of dye stops, refractory materials, flux in metallurgy. I was saying when there is an acidic impurity like uh, phosphorus pentoxide and silica, calcium oxide is used as a flux. Since actually calcium carbonate limestone powder is added. That on heating obviously gives quick lime and that reacts with the acidic impurity or gang. Impurities are called gang, not your gang. Gang, G-A-N-G-U-E. Uh, and that will produce slag that is removed separately. Now, I'm so sorry why I have not make it uh, look, ah, yes, now. Then slag lime, let us talk something about the slag lime just now we have prepared. We have prepared by adding calculated quantity of water, quick lime becomes slag lime and enormous quantity of heat. You must have seen in uh, the lime uh, bhatti as we call factories where you know the lime is prepared in a beetle, Indian beetle, which is uh, the main ingredient is chun as we call it in Hindi, that is prepared in, uh, in, in, in lime factory where uh, you add, they bring quick lime uh, stones and then add water. You'll find a lot of heat will be evolved. Very, very exothermic. Now, slick lime is a white amorphous powder, moderately soluble in, in water. I told you it is in the middle and its aqueous solution is called lime water, but if you, loaded with more, it becomes a suspension. It is called milk of lime. So there is a difference between lime water, which is a clear solution, and this is milk of lime, suspension. And the solid substance is like lime. You know, carbon dioxide when passed through lime water first produces a white precipitate, which with subsequent excess carbon dioxide produces calcium bicarbonate, which is soluble. 
Now comes the last but not the least is bleaching powder. You have studied bleaching powder in your class 10 program. When dry chlorine and dry slag lime, they are mixed and heated, not at a very high temperature, 40 degrees Celsius, then bleaching powder is formed. And this is a cheating formula. A crude representation of uh, bleaching powder is CaOCl-Cl, calcium chloro hypochlorite, because there are two types of ions, hypochlorite with a chlorine oxidation number plus one, and chloride with a oxidation of number of minus one, right? So, but in a, it's, a, it's a disproportionation reaction of chlorine, but the actual composition is variable. Very, very, very variable, it, but it contains a combination of basic calcium hypochlorite and basic calcium chloride. In the Odling view, it is this one. This is the oldest formula that Odling proposed. But Clifford later on, Clifford, this is Clifford, he analyzed the mixture. It contains, it contains various combination of mixture of hydrated basic calcium hypochlorite and basic calcium chloride with water crystallization. But for you, so far as your book is concerned, you write like this, chlorine, two chlorine plus two calcium hydroxide, that is dry, all should be dry. It's not uh, lime water, it should be dry. To give you a mixture of calcium hypochlorite, calcium chloride, and water. This is what is given in your book. You can you can jolly well write it instead of writing the Clifford uh, formula. Where, uh, yes, you can write down for your examination purpose what is the composition of bleaching powder. It's a combination of calcium hypochlorite T T and chloride DO. And lime water. I'm sorry. Uh, slag lime can be used in many ways like mortar as a building material, making mortar. Used in white was in our you know days uh, when we were children, you know, our house in, in some occasions like wedding or death ceremony, uh, our house, entire house was being whitewashed. That is nothing but a solution of calcium hydroxide suspension. When it is uh, coated on the walls, leave it for some time, then the atmospheric carbon dioxide reacts with it, becomes calcium carbonate, which is totally white. So immediately you can't see the glazing white color, but after some time, it looks white. But nowadays people have started uh, using plastic paints instead of uh, the white washing. You, but even, People who can't afford are still whitewashing. Used in whitewash due to okay due to its disinfectant nature. Used in glass making, preparation of bleaching powder, preparation of bleaching powder, which is a germicide. I mean, this is a repetition. Let me, uh, which is a germicide and disinfectant. Obviously, it is a bleaching substance. Its name is bleaching powder. Calcium carbonate is the last one which is available abundantly in nature. Nobody, no fool will prepare calcium carbonate. But if you want to chemically prepare in your laboratory, you can do that. You have take lime water, pass carbon dioxide limited quantity. If you pass more, it will be calcium bicarbonate. Or if you have a calcium salt like calcium chloride, calcium nitrate and add sodium carbonate, there is a double displacement reaction You get a precipitate. This calcium carbonate is sparingly soluble. In carbonate, you know, the solubility goes on decreasing down the group. Calcium carbonate is fairly, fairly insoluble. I mean, sparingly soluble. It will appear as a precipitate. Calcium carbonate is a white powder, sparingly soluble in water. On strong heating, you know what happens. And with acid, you know what happens. 
calcium carbonate as marble used as building material as limestone as a flux in iron metallurgy and many metallurgical processes making paper preparation of quick lime it is a mild abrasive in toothpaste and as a filler in cosmetics in cosmetics now this is the last oh i am saying every uh, slide uh, i am saying this is the last you see let me show you in fact what is the last now yes this is the last okay otherwise you cannot master of a little bit of patience to go for another 15 minutes now plaster of paris i think you must have god forbid that some of us had the bad experience of breaking our bones just falling down from some somewhere particularly the 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 the, the, uh, the um, uh, um, uh, what we say in the world we say senior citizens we don't say old people it is a dishonor to tell anyone old remember i don't tell anybody you old man don't say say senior citizen sometimes you can address a, an old man as uncle so that you can't understand to what extent he will be elated and he will bless you i say a male old person i don't know the female psychology right this is my advice sometimes if an old man is little more free to you start asking or addressing as uncle he might be very very happy if he scolds tells how dare you am i looking like your uncle i am like your grandfather you are telling uncle oh i am so sorry then english people have taught us how we can pacify this uh, the, the surrounding by saying i am sorry in a true sense oh this is kidding let us come away from the kidding and uh, see this is called plaster of paris and why was saying that while we break up a bone uh, the orthopedician that plasters with the plaster of paris it has got a fantastic ability to harden so that it can set the broken bones this is also called hemi hydrate of calcium sulfate per calcium sulfate uh, unit half water there is nothing called half water it is better to write two calcium sulfate dot water so you can also write in this way this is the empirical formula calcium hemi hydrate calcium sulfate hemi hydrate it can be prepared from gypsum gypsum is available in nature so when you heat gypsum slowly to 120 degrees celsius or 393k you get plaster of paris i have written pp for plaster of paris two calcium sulfate dot water so i have put a, a parenthesis to avoid confusion this is two units of gypsum salt you are getting one unit of plaster of paris and three units of water three molecules of water so this sometimes is written as to avoid confusion where where two can be written uh, uh, outside the parenthesis or inside so it is better to write calcium sulfate dot half water now at 200 if you further heat to 200 uh, then calcium sulfate will be formed that is uh, the half water will go and you get anhydrous calcium sulfate this is called dead burnt plaster the plaster is dead and burnt right of course further heating strongly it will produce so2 o2 and calcium oxide that is understood so plaster of paris sets with adequate water to form hard plastic like mass with 5 to 15 minutes it will harden and set right this is plaster of paris plaster of paris uses you know in building in building industry you know before uh, applying plastic paint first it is treat i mean it is uh, applied with plaster of paris then the plastic paint will stick plaster the fractured bones in dentistry ornamental work for making statues as a uh cast mold or a cast 
for making statues and busts. Uh, so these are used. And then gypsum, talk about gypsum is very trivial because it is available in nature as gypsum salt, but you can prepare any calcium chloride uh, or anything added with sulfuric acid, sodium sulfate, calcium sulfate is moderately soluble. Then increase the you know content of sulfate, then it will exceed the solubility product and you get precipitate and then you crystallize. Now gypsum is naturally available, moderately soluble in water, but the unique property of calcium sulfate is its solubility decreases with increase in temperature. Because the dissolution process is exothermic and if you apply LCP, if you increase the temperature, system will favor the endothermic direction, that is the backward direction. The solubility will decrease. So uh, other sulfates won't, but calcium sulfate, uh, particularly I'm talking of alkaline earth metal. Uh, I'm not talking about sodium sulfate. We had discussed then about sodium sulfate. So calcium sulfate solubility decreases with increase in temperature. Calcium sulfate also forms a double salt with ammonium sulfate. And it is used for making plaster paris, blackboard chalk, cement. The last but not the least is cement. You must know how calcium is important component in cement. In 1824, Joseph Asdeen in England introduced cement for building purpose. It was called Portland cement. It's not that Portland is a person. It is a place, it is a island near England. It belongs to England called Portland. Portland is an isle of England where natural limestone looked like cement, little gray cement. So the cement was called Portland cement because you know from Portland, uh, the limestones were uh, mined to prepare uh, this cement. Cement, the definition of cement is like this. Cement is a mixture of lime and clay, that's it. Cement is a mixture of lime and clay. Lime means calcium oxide. Clay contains so many things. Silicon dioxide, silica, and oxides of aluminum, iron, magnesium. So the average composition of Portland cement is calcium oxide 50 to 60%, silica 20 to 25%, alumina 5 to 10%, magnesium oxide 2 to 3% and ferric oxide still less and SO3, dissolved SO3 still less. And for a good quality cement, the ratio between silica and alumina here, the second part in the clay part, in the clay part, Silica alumina ratio should be between 2.5 to 4. The ratio between these two, silica should be more, alumina should be less. At least 2.5 times more will be silica. And the ratio between lime and clay, ratio between lime and clay, the ratio between lime to total oxide means clay. total oxides of everything should be close to two. So that two ratios have to be maintained. One ratio within clay, the other ratio between the lime and clay. Lime will be the predominant uh, component and the less component will be the mixture of all other oxides, including silica, which is the dominant among the clay, right? Raw materials is limestone. First, it was a mine from Portland. That is why Portland cement, then clay. When a mixture of these two are heated strongly, they produce first a granule-like substance called cement clinker. Cement clinker is then mixed with two to three percent gypsum. Uh, gypsum salt. We 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 talked about this gypsum salt just now. You add some gypsum, and then grind it to powder. Gypsum delays the setting process. Because if you apply, you know, you are a building, you have bricks and you are putting the mortar in between the bricks. And if it suddenly it hardens, then you can't uh, form it in a very homogeneous manner. So the setting time should be a little uh, delayed. So that delay in the setting time uh, of hardening 
is due to the presence of gypsum. The cement clinker is mixed with gypsum and powdered that gives you cement. The composition of Portland cement, if you are asked in, 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 in formula, you have three calcium silicate, calcium silicate. There are two types of calcium silicate, calcium silicate SiO4, then SiO5, this is called dicalcium silicate. This is called tricalcium silicate, 52%, and tricalcium aluminate, 11%. This is the formula. Setting up cement, you know, when, when uh, mixed with water, cement hardens due to hydration of the component because these components get hydrated. And once it is hydrated, it swells and hardens. Gypsum delays the setting process. And you know how uh, we knew how sodium and potassium were biologically important because uh, we are no biology teacher. I have no capacity to take you uh, to the inner aspects of biology. If I do so, then it will be injustice <laughs> to the students. So, but the information that we must know as a, a non-biology student, uh, many of you are not having biology. You had biology in class 10, but gone to oblivion. So an adult body, contains only 25 gram of magnesium. You are not yet an adult, maybe one year uh, to go and 1200 gram of calcium with five gram of iron and some little bit of copper. Human body needs 200 to 300 milligram of calcium every day. So that is met from our food. About 99% of the body calcium is present in bones and teeth. Magnesium is a cofactor right, uh, used in all enzymes that utilizes ATP in phosphate transfer. Chlorophyll also contains magnesium, which is a major component in the plant leaves, leaf, uh, green leaves. Calcium takes part in neuromuscular function like sodium, potassium, interneuronal transmission, cell membrane integrity, and blood coagulation. Bones are continuously get dissolved. Our bones are continuously getting dissolved and get redeposited to the extent of 400 milligram per day. Calcium concentration in blood plasma is this much is maintained by two hormones like calcitonin and parathyroid. So with this, we conclude today's session and uh, our next program will be uh, group 13, that is boron family. It is still more fascinating than the S block. We have completed S block. And with this much of background, you first study your textbook and the materials that I am providing any person who is viewing, watching mine. So you must uh, read my materials, then your textbook, and any other book, if you want, if you have time from the uh, you know, vast organic chemistry and physical chemistry, if you can save some time, you can get more number of compounds and study them with logic. Bye-bye. See you next time. If you have not subscribed to my channel and if you are following, please don't hesitate. And what's the harm in thumb? making a thumbs up? Means like. Do you lose anything? All the best. God bless you.